Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Fort Loramie High School, where today the Lady Redskins welcome in the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Nate Garlock and our entire WOSN crew. And Nate, we take a look at this game today and what a matchup we have. Two of the premier teams in Northwest Ohio, and they both come in with great records. Yeah, they've been scheduling each other pretty regularly over the last couple of years. Really look forward to this game every year. So much tradition behind yeah, each one of these schools, and something's going to give today. Fort Lormie started off the year undefeated, 11 and 0. Ottawa Glandor, four games, uh, four and 0 to start the season. Then a little bit of a rough patch, back-to-back -back losses. Something they're not used to, but they've rebounded great. Six in a row coming into tonight. So someone's going to come away a, a little bit uh, upset, but a great matchup tonight. Can't wait to watch it. Let's take a look at the visitors. The Ottawa Glandor Titans. They come in at 10 and 2, 4 and 0 in the WBL. Offensively, they average 55.6 a game. Defensively, they give up 39 a game. They're Two losses, Nate, are to Toledo Christian and Liberty Benton. Both those schools only have one loss apiece, so they don't shy away from competition. Uh, no, not at all. You know, Ottawa Glandorf, very familiar with Toledo Christian, especially through uh, tournament runs over the last couple of years. And then that Liberty Benton game, Liberty Benton, if you haven't seen them yet, just length all <laughs> over the place. Really a very good. talented team. But they got a little bit, you know, a little bit of revenge. Uh, Crestview is the team that knocked off Liberty Benton. Yes, That's that yes. one loss. Crestview comes into OG a couple of weeks ago. OG getting healthier, and they just completely ran over Crestview. So Ottawa Glendorf looking better and better every game um, as they're trying to get healthy. Fort Lormie, though, man, what a team. What a team. Let's take a look at the Lady Redskins from Fort Lormie. They come in at 11-0, 6-0 in the Shelby County Conference. Offensively, they average 50.1 a game. Nate, that's not what I'm impressed with. They only give up 29 points a game, which is amazing for a high school girls team. Uh, as I said, they're 11-0, three state titles in 21 and 15 and 13. And you look at the program as a whole. We were here last year, you and I, and they had a, 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 a the little kid night dribble thing, and there must have been 100 kids on the floor. I mean, it's it's a legitimate program. Yeah, with the community this size, you know, the fact that they have the sustained success that they have is impressive. You mentioned the three state titles should be a fourth. Go back to that 1920 yes, yes. year. They're one of those teams that got pulled off yes. uh, right there in the state semis. That team probably was going to win the state they, title they as were well. Really good. They were a very very good team. So this is, uh, you know, Coach Siegel has has this program humming as she has Coach Antho. A lot of success on his side as well. Lots of state championships. A lot of state appearances. These two are the two two of the pre your teams in the entire state no matter what division you're looking at and the fact that we get to watch them on is, pretty much is, on a year, yeah, yearly great. basis is great. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for the visitors the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans. They'll start number three Carson Erford the 5'6 freshman. She gives at 8.9 a game. Number 12 Lily Hazelman 5'4 senior at 3.2 a game. Kaylin Grothaus number 22 a 5'3 sophomore at 8.5 a game. Number 32 Kaylin Kimmett a 5'10 sophomore at 6.8 a game. And number 34 Katie Kaufman a 6'1 junior at 9.2 a game. The Titans will control the tip. We'll get to the Skins starting lineup here in just a minute. Both of these teams are going to play pretty similar on both offense and defense. They want to go fast as you see Lily Hazelman get to the basket there, but it's going to be fast tempo up and down the floor, and immediately here comes the Redskins. And a nice dribble drive there by Hazelman as she misses the shot, and the Skins come down. There's another steal. Here come the Titans up the right side. They'll go to the middle of the floor, and that's where they'll set up the offense. Let's take a look at the Lady Skins starting lineup. Number 11, Ava Turner, a senior, 5'8", 12.3 a game. Number 21, Victoria Misher. She's a sophomore, 6'6", 6 6 6.3 a game. Skylar Albers is a junior at 5'10", 7.6 a game. Number 30, Jaden Rose, is a 5'5", junior at 2.3. And number 40, Avery Brandaway, is a 5'10", sophomore at 11.4. And the Loramie Redskins strike first, and they get the two on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Hazelman lines up a three. She hasn't shot very well from behind the three-point line to start the season as she has come back from injury. Just uh, one of 12, I believe, prior to Thursday night. Hit a couple of three-pointers then. You see her open up with a big one tonight. Well, they'll take that. Our premier, or excuse me, our premier sponsor today is the Reese Mearing & Company. Today's premier sponsor, Reese Mearing & Company. CPA is helping businesses navigate their financial future. Our scoreboard sponsor is the Ultimate Outdoor. Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola, Ultimate Outdoor Division of Alts Seamless Spouting. So as you've said before, Nate, when you watch the Fort Lormie Lady Redskins, they love, I mean absolutely love to get up-tempo. They love to press a lot. Everything is fast. They'll play 10 players deep, and they have no problem with that. Yeah, Fort Lormie, and then it's the, pretty much the exact mirror image on the other side right. as Ottawa <laughs> Glendorf is going to do the exact same thing. They're going to run deep on their bench. They're going to get up and down. They love to turn defense into offense. Both of these teams, they're so good defensively, but that's what helps their offense 
And the freshman there getting the layup. Carson Erford, nice job on the left side as she goes up. She knocks in the deuce, and she gives the Lady Titans the 5-2 lead on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. And I think she's going to be one of the keys. Carson Erford, just a freshman, but in his starting lineup, which is a big accomplishment with a program like Ottawa Glendor. Oh, my goodness. But when she plays, if you didn't know she was a freshman, you wouldn't guess. You would think yes. she was a two- or three-year varsity player. Yeah, she plays very cool, very calm, composure, and you saw that dribble drive. She wasn't afraid to go amongst the bigger girls and has a very nice game. Skins will, or excuse me, the Skins will take it out underneath their basket, down 5-2 on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. There's another steal by the Titans as they'll come down the middle of the floor. This is Lily Hazelman with the ball. She's the left-handed sniper. We saw her earlier go from the left side, knock in the triple. You know it's a big game when the JV officials stick around for the game, and I just saw him walk in the gym. <laughs> This is one of those marquee matchups a lot Everybody. of people saw. And they're they're, they're going to be watching, checking in on the scores if they're not here. That's right. Take a look at Ottawa Glendorf. They beat St. Mary's Thursday night, 54-48. How, how tough is it, Nate, when you play a conference game like in the WBL and have to come back and play a state-ranked power on a Saturday afternoon? Well, and I, I was at that game. I, I had that call for WOSN. And, you know, as you see, another turnover for Fort Lormy. Here come the Skins running down the floor. Nice dribble drive by number 40 for the Skins. That's Avery Brandaway. The 5'10 sophomore knocks in the deuce, and it makes it 5'4. And there's another dribble drive by number 22, Kaylin Grothaus, the 5'3 sophomore. She goes up the right side, and she gives the Titans a 7'4 lead. And here we go, back and forth. It's the <laughs> track meet. These teams want to get after it. They're going to go quickly. And look at the hustle from Lily Hazel, and she really gets down on the floor. You started to say something about the game Thursday yeah, night. Yeah, so on, on Thursday night, you know, it, it's always difficult when you have to play kind of close, and you have a game of this magnitude kind of right, you know, right behind yes, it. Yeah. And I think Ottawa Glendorf was looking ahead a little bit. You know, um, they got off to a slow start. St. Mary's really gave it to them in the first quarter, and then took them a little bit to settle in. And then once they did, um, they were they were okay. But I mean, I think that this matchup was looming large. They knew that it was coming. They knew it would be yeah. a, you know a measuring stick game for them. As you know, we are now into January, and you know February is just a few weeks away, which means tournament draws coming. So I, I'm sure they had it scheduled, and, and that makes it even that much more difficult, especially when you really had to grind through a game like they did against St. Mary's. Sure. There's another steal by the Titans. They'll go up the left side. On the left side, and she takes it up, and she scores. Number 22, Kaylin Grothaus. And the Lady Skins are going to take a timeout down 9-4. They'll take a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside for our first timeout. You're watching Girls High School Basketball on WSN. We're back here at Fort Loramie High School where the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans take a 9-4 lead and it's everything's being created off their defense right now. Nate, they're getting steals and moving down the floor. Yeah, and that's what they like and now they have the opportunity here to set up that press which is another way that they get turnovers and it's just kind of that cycle. They turn that turnovers into points, points back into pressure, pressure into turnovers. We were talking off the air a little bit and you want to talk about a matchup. We talk about the girls but two coaching legends here. Troy Yant in his 11th season who's done just an incredible job with the Lady Titans and then on the other side, Carla Siegel, 502 two wins and 120 losses. Yeah, two future Hall of Fame coaches. Um, they made so much success between them. You know, what Coach Siegel does down here in Fort Loramie is impressive year in and year out. Um, just an absolute, you know, intimidating presence just to being a bounder. You absolutely. Know, she, she, you know, she, <laughs> Everybody knows great, who's in charge on that bench. Absolutely. And Coach Siegel does a great job. Coach Ann on the other side does as well. You know, these guys, um, both of them, they, they just, they know how to coach basketball. They know how to run a team. And, you know, that's why these programs are successful successful year in and year out. And I also like to think that Scott Mag, our colleague, has a lot to do with their success over there. you got to give Scott some props. He's a WSN guy. Well, I don't know. I'm a little upset with Scott. He didn't say <laughs> he hi didn't, when he, he walked did, by. He did so, not yeah. talk to us at all, yeah. did he? <laughs> There's a little jumper from the foul line. Knocks it in for the Skins. Avery Brandaway, the 5'10 sophomore. She's 11.4 a game. She's not afraid to put the ball up, and she's got really nice length and size. Does a good job for the Skins. And there we see a push. Could have been a travel, but they get a push right away. Yeah, I think that uh, Caitlin Kim at that time got away with it a little bit, but she went right into the teeth of that defense, and I think the only thing that really saved her was I don't think any of the Fort Lormie players were expecting right. her to try to come through there, so they were taken off balance and you know made it look like they were the ones that picked up that foul. So the Titans will take it out underneath. They'll kick it back out top. They'll go to the left side. 
Nice dribble drive on the left side and a great job by number 34, Katie Kaufman, the 6'1 post player. Boy, she's a matchup nightmare, Nate, when she puts the ball on the floor and goes to the rim like that. She is. She's been playing so much better here as of late. Always plays well, but just seems like that confidence just seems to be higher here recently. Coming off a 14-point game on Thursday night, just continuing pretty much right where she left off, getting to the basket there. And Caitlin, the six, excuse me, Katie, the 6'1 junior, averages 9.2 a game. And there's another bucket and close the gap at 11-8. And Brandaway is on fire right now. And she's got six to lead the Lormy Redskins. They're down 11-8 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. See, substitutions waiting at the scores table. They're gonna be, both these teams are just going to cycle girls in and out. That's how they're able to play at the tempo that they are. Three ball on the way, goes off the back rim, kind of fell down, and nice rebound there by 34, Katie Kaufman, as she starts to flex her muscles a little more. She's got the last two buckets for the Titans and gives them the 13-8 lead. Ottawa Glandorf is a tremendous offensive rebounding team. They, so much they are able to give themselves second and third opportunities that when they're down there, you have the length of Katie. Uh, when Chloe Glenn is in yes. the game as well, she is a presence down low. They just get, they, you know, they can go as quick as they can and get shots up because when you can shoot with confidence because you're not worried if I miss it, oh, we're one and done, sure. and you know my teammates are going to pick it up and we're going to have second and third opportunities, it lets you play a lot freer. And we haven't talked much, Nate, about the injuries for OG the last, not just this year, but last year also. A nice backdoor cut, and the ball goes off the back iron. Rebound by number 41, Summer Hoying, the 5'11 junior, and she's going to go to the line for two. Yeah, Ottawa Glandorf, you were talking about the injuries, and they were just decimated. Yes. Um, you know, the, the so girls' soccer team had a ton of success, but during that, they had a lot of girls get hurt. They're still coming back. Lily Hazelman looks to be about back to 100%. Uh, Chloe Glenn getting ready to check back in the game right now. She's still working her way back from a knee injury. And as you look on the floor, you know, I said prior to the game, the Ottawa Glendorf at times seems to be keeping the knee brace companies, yeah, you know, right. in business. Yeah, you're right. Because these girls, they've just had so many unfortunate injuries, but it just talks about their strength and their toughness because they all battle back and they're out here. As you see Grothaus out here as well, you know, last time down the floor, she pulled away from the entire defense. And she hits that big three point. Kaylin Grothaus, the sophomore, knocks in the three, and she just hammers that one home to give the OG Titans the 16-10 lead. You saw Summer Hoying come in the game for the Skins, and she goes to the line, knocks in two, and she's a big part of this offense, and they've got some length and size over there. Fort Lormy with Brandaway at 5'10", and Summer Hoying at 5'11". Yeah, and it's not too often that either one of these teams goes up against a squad that can match up with their height. So when you get them matched up against each other. That's a great other, point. That's a know, great it, point. It's just not a situation they're used to. And you look out there, and that was my next question to you. Both these teams have not seen the athleticism that they're seeing today, and it's it's really fun to watch when you have two athletic, big, lengthy teams play like this. Well, they have it in a game, but they see it in practice right. every night. <laughs> right, that's a good point. You know, I mean, so, I mean, it is the one benefit that they have is that at least they've seen this in each other, you know, sure. on the practice floor every day. Is the skins, they try to go in the middle. Shot goes up, and they're going to get a foul. And I think we're going to get number 32 on the foul. That's Kaitlyn Kimmett. I believe that's who they're going to call him, and we'll see what they say here. Yeah, Kaitlyn Kimmett gets the call for the foul. She will send number 11, Ava Turner, to the line, and she'll shoot two. Ava Turner, the leading scorer on the team, the senior 5'8 guard, averages 12.3 a game. She misses the first one. And you just look at the number of players for each team, such as Fort Lormie with, you know, kids averaging 12.3.1, 2.7, 2.8. Not a lot of points, but when everybody's averaging something, boy, that really you know piles up. Well, and what that does too is that allows you to not be concerned when you have to go to your bench. That's when right. you when you you know that there's not going to be much drop off. People are going to be able to contribute, and that's the expectation of both of these teams. You know, don't watch the starting five do it. If you're going to be in the game, you better be able to contribute. Three goes off the back iron. That was number 32 for the Titans. That's Caitlin Kimmett. She misses the shot. Rebound comes down to the skins. Ball goes out of bounds and we go back to the ladies' skins. So with 1.38 to go, OG continues a 16-11 lead. Danny Hobart, Nate Garlock from Fort Loramie High School for this big high school girls matchup between the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Fort Loramie Lady Redskins. Well, we were talking earlier, Nate, you look around this gym and the state championship banners are just everywhere. It's unbelievable, the athletic excellence in this community. 
Yeah, and that's one of those things where you, know, you talk about, you know, home court advantage and things like that. When you walk into a gym like this, it can almost be intimidating. Right. The banners right. are huge. They're everywhere. You see the success when you walk in here, but, you know, that doesn't usually work on a team like Outback Landorf, no, who has they, quite a few banners of their own. Right. They have not backed down. So a great point. Number 11 from the left side. Three ball goes up. That was Ava Turner. It goes off the back rim. Here come the Outback Landorf Titans. Caitlin Kimmett brings the ball down the middle. It's just swinging around. Fort Lorme in a little bit of a 1 2 2, maybe matchup zone here. Trying to slow down the OG attack. They'll kick it back out. 106 to go. Three ball on the way by Kimmett. She goes off the back iron. Rebound comes down. Fort Lorme corrals it and stolen away. Great steal there by number 34, Katie Kaufman. She gets the ball back to the Titans. She dribble drives to the middle, puts the ball up, and they're going to get a foul. I thought she lost the ball there, but she's fouled on the play. She'll go to the line. Yeah, that shows the strength of Kaufman. It, you know, when she was down there, she didn't go anywhere. She stayed there, did a nice job of getting that basketball back for her team and then just fighting through the hands, holding on to that grip just to get a shot up. Now she has a chance for two. I just love the fact, Nate, that she's not afraid to put the ball on the floor. She's really talented. She makes the first one and gives the OG Titans the 17-11 lead on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. The Lady Skins defeated Anna Thursday night, 38-32. So I'm sure a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, closer than they wanted to be in a league game, but uh, nonetheless, they got the win, 38-32. As they try to get the double here on a Thursday-Saturday combination. They pushed the ball inside, almost went out of bounds, went to the baseline, but it was crowd in by the Lady Skins. And they'll bring it up and set it up top. This is number 30. This is Jaden Rose. They'll go to the middle of the floor of the foul line. Shot goes up, and it's good. Avery Brandaway, and she's having herself a night. She's got eight already to lead the Skins, and they're down 17-13. Jumper from the right side. It's good. Are you kidding me? Kaylin Grothaus, the 5'3 sophomore. She said, if you can do it, so can I. And she knocks down the deuce, make it 19-13. Five seconds to go. Skins trying to get a shot. There's a steal from half court. Shot goes off, and it's no good. After one quarter from Fort Laramie High School, the Lady Titans have come into town and taken a 19-13 lead. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School. We're after one quarter. The Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans lead the Fort Laramie Redskins 19 to 13. And uh, all I can say is, wow, we're getting a treat here, Nate. Both teams. And I looked over during the timeout, and Carla Siegel was imploring her kids to tell them to keep the Titans off the boards. Yeah, that's, that's a much uh, taller task than a lot of people might right. realize. You know, especially for a team that's used to being able to, to dominate down low, to have to try to keep them off of there as Erford comes out with that nice floater in the lane. I just really like her game. There's another three ball from the side. Number 22 for the Titans, Kaylin Grothaus flexes her muscles again, and she gives the OG Titans the 22-13 lead. She's got nine on the afternoon. Yeah, Kaylin Grothaus having a great uh, here first half. Got off to a good start there in the first quarter. She's so dangerous. That's her second three-pointer of the game already. Here come the skins. They'll go to the middle. Shot goes up, and it's good. Nice little half hook there by Brandaway. And really, she's keeping him in the game right now. 22-15 Titans. Yeah, honestly, it's kind of turned into a Grothaus versus Brandaway <laughs> right. a game so far. They're going back and forth. There's a one-two punch for both of their clubs. Here comes the Titans. 7.05 to play in the second quarter. OG up 22-15. Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock from Fort Laramie High School. There's a, almost a steal, and they get the ball back, and they'll go back to the middle of the floor, kick it down on the left side, and a great layup there by Carson Erford as she knocks in the left-hand layup. And it all started with the hustle from Emma Brinkman getting on the floor to be able to grab that one to make sure that her team was able to keep that possession, not going too far, not getting the travel call, and just keeping their heads about them. And OG that time in the scramble play, knowing where everybody was. And you saw there a, a Fort Lorme comes down and kind of, Nate, it, it's almost to me that Ottawa Glendorf is forcing Fort Lorme into some quick shots, and, and OG's getting what they want on offense. Yeah, they're, they're getting a lot more high percentage shots. We're seeing the ones that Fort Lorme is shooting, they've been a little bit farther away from the basket probably than they want it to be, but he's got to credit Ottawa Glendorf from the defense so far. They're doing a heck of a job, and their size is really a factor right now <clears throat> as 
Number 34, Katie Kaufman, the 6'1 junior, is really dominating the middle of the floor offensively and defensively. As you see her cut across the middle of the floor trying to call for the ball. Titans will bring it out top. This is Carson Arford, the freshman sensation. She just does a little crossover dribble, goes to the middle, and she almost got to the lane there, Nate. Seems like right now, Fort Laramie seems to be chasing Ottawa Glamour. Yes, and that's a great point. And it doesn't usually happen for them. They're a lot more usually about using, dictating what's going on on defense. <laughs> and hey, there you Katie saw Kaufman. That strength is unreal. Katie Kaufman, and they ran that. It looked like a little bit of a flex, and they screened off the high post, and Katie goes down the middle, gets the ball, and that's exactly what they wanted to happen. And she's going to go to the line up 26-15. Just no panic down there as she had arms all around her trying to poke that basketball away, went through all of it and able to get it up. Has a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. She lets it fly and it goes off the back iron. Rebound comes down and saved out of bounds, but it's going to go back to Fort Laramie. So Katie Kaufman, the 6'1 junior, just flexing her muscles right now as she gets inside, gets fouled, goes to the line, misses the shot, but OG has the 26-15 lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Lady Skins will set up. They'll go to the right side. Try to get down to the block. Back to the foul line. Foul line jumper. And that ball goes off the back iron. Shot put up by number 23 for the Skins, Alex Rose. Been one of the few times in the last couple trips down the floor that Fort Lormie's had a clean look at the basket. Just couldn't convert. And you see a lot of screens and rolls by the OG Titans as they're screening up high. And they're... Players are running to the basket and they're getting the ball into the middle of the floor. A great job by the Titans as they turn the ball over here and Skins will bring it down the right side. Carson Erford that time just drove her feet a little bit, got a little excited in the lane as she was trying to drop that one off. You saw Carson Erford playing some really good defense on the baseline and there's a big time block and they get a rebound to put it back in. And the Skins get a much-needed bucket to close the gap to 26-17. That was Alex Rose on the putback. And I have no idea how Carissa Meyer did not step out of bounds as she ran that baseline. She did a great job with her foot control, knowing where she was. As Kaylin you don't have Kimmett, a fight yeah. for the loose ball. And Kaylin Kimmett with the missed three, and the ball comes down. There'll be a foul against Ottawa Glandorf. That'll go back to OG, and that's Kaufman with the first foul for her. That'll give OG 5,000 and a half. And boy, you were right, Nate. A lot of substitution. We got kids coming in and out. I'm looking at my <laughs> roster going, who's this, who's this, who's that? Yeah, they, they don't waste any time, but that's what allows them to play both these teams oh, to play at this tempo. They, they're so well conditioned, but they're able to run fresh legs out there quite often. There's a steal by Ottawa Glandor. Number 30 for the Titans. She gets the ball. That's Kit Carly Brinkman, and she just, it went around her back, and she had to grab it, and she traveled while she was doing it. Yeah, there's nowhere to go with it. Had it kind of <laughs> stuck in the middle of her back. And... So here come the Skins trying to get this lead and under control, or the, excuse me, this deficit under control, and they turn the ball over again. Goes out of bounds and will go back to the Skins. Down 26-17 with 4.31 to go. Two more substitutions for Ottawa Glendorf. Carson Erford and Chloe Glenn coming back into the game. You know, Ottawa Glendorf was playing man-to-man -man defense. So they, they put the pressure on there. They keep, the, they keep their, um, you know, who they're defending in front of them so well. And right now, Fort Lormie hasn't had much of an answer. We haven't seen a lot of screens working. We haven't seen a lot of things that have become open to them. And right now, they just seem to be playing they, a little bit sped that, up. That's a great point. You're, you're so right. They, they just look like they're speeding everything up. And, and give a credit to the Ottawa Glendorf Titans because they are really smothering when they get the ball on the baseline. There's a jumper from the left side. Goes off the rim. Rebound comes down to Caitlin Kimmett. And she's been on the glass all afternoon. Here comes Erford again. She dribble drives to the right side. And misses off the mark. But a fantastic drive for the freshman. Rebound comes down to the skins. They'll go up the right side of the floor. Down 26-17. Skins will set the ball up from the top. They'll go to the right side, looking to close this gap. Down 26-17 as they go back door. Ball comes in, nice little reverse layup. And number 11 for the Skins, Ava Turner, misses the shot. Ball goes out of bounds and will go back to the Lady Skins. 
And that, that's a mental mistake that time as they're not going to be happy with that turnover. You're not happy with any turnover. But <laughs> right. They're fighting over the same ball led to a travel call where if one of them would just kind of let go on it, realize what they were doing, they would be able to maintain that possession. I, I'm, are you surprised that Fort Laramie hasn't tried to press a little bit and maybe speed the Titans up? Or do you think that maybe they understand that they're so athletic that pressing wouldn't be the answer right now? Um, I, am, I am a little, only because, you know, We've Fort seen them so many times, yeah. And, yeah. They, and Fort Laramie can do that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that, too, is a credit for ottawa Glendor. They, you know, they play this style so often, they know how to beat it. And, so and they what can they're pass doing, over the top, too. And, and <laughs> what they're, they're not wasting any time. So right. Fort Laramie, even though, even after made shots, as they're trying to get down into their press, ottawa Glendorf just grabs the ball, passes it, and they're up the floor, and it's really hard to get set where you want to That's in that point. small time. That's a great point. Avery Brandaway goes to the line. She hits the first one, and then she knocks down the second one. And she's been the answer for the skins. She's got 12 on the afternoon, 12 of the 19. They're down 26-19, and here's a little bit of a half-court press out top, and they'll try to double-team up top. Roadhouse did a nice job getting out of trouble as she kind of got trapped there right around the midcourt. Ball goes down on the floor, goes out of bounds. And the officials say it goes off of the Fort Laramie Lady Redskins. So there you saw a little bit of a half-court trap there. And the uh, Skins trying to make something happen. Titans throw the ball out of bounds, but it goes off the skin. And there again, ball's on the floor. And there's the turnover they were looking for. A rare miscue by Chloe Glenn as she took that inbounds pass and took her eyes off the ball and bounced off her hands. And after the scramble, Fort Lormie ends up with it. Here's Fort Lormie with the turnover. Ball goes out of bounds and it's going to go back to Ottawa Glendorf. So uh, or Fort Lormie gets the turnover they were looking for, but they bring the ball down and turn it over themselves. So a little bit of uh, butterfingers on both teams here. OG up 26 19 with 2.53 to go in the first half. This is Erford out top. Guarded by number 23, Alex Rose. They'll go to the right side of the floor. Dribble dive to the foul line. Kick it out to the left side. Three ball on the way up. Off the iron. Rebound comes down to the Skins. Number 22, Skylar Albers. She bring the ball down the floor. There's another turnover by the Skins. Ottawa Glando takes advantage of it as they run the court. Shot goes up. Missed off the iron. Here come the Skins. It was a nice job that time by Carson Erfer to get her hand in the passing lane. And she just kind of had a knack for it through her arm out to, to knock that one away and to lead to the run out. But both teams right now missing easy shots. Katie Kaufman comes back in the game, the 6-1 junior. She got a rest. And that's the last thing that this Lady Skins want to see is a, a rested <laughs> Katie Kaufman, the 6-1 junior, has been dominating on both ends of the floor. So now Ottawa Glendorf is in a little bit of a, a press here as they'll go into a man press. Fort Laramie just clears it out, and they'll let their guard bring it up the floor. 2.15 to go, OG up 26-19. They're going to say double dribble as Avery Brandaway just double dribbles on the left side. And yeah, she's right in front of the official that time. A little bit of hesitation move, picked it up right. enough, and yep. it was an easy call. 2.09 to go, OG leads 26-19. Here come the OG Titans trying to add on to that lead. Look inside for Katie Kaufman, and they throw the ball away. Here come the skins. Brandon, we did a nice job of jumping that passing lane. She read it the whole way. And Fort Lormie now with another opportunity. They've come up empty the last three trips down the floor. We haven't said enough about the defense. Kaylin Grothaus is playing on whoever brings the ball up the floor for the skins. She is just smothering, and they're going by committee right now, and they're just trying to get the ball out of the net and go down the floor, and Grothaus is causing all kinds of problems for them. Yeah, offensively and defensively as well. And, you know, she's playing a heck of a game right now. There's Katie Coffin on the rebound again as she goes high above the rim to grab that one. Here comes Grothaus again as she goes to the left side. She'll get the ball out. They'll set it back up top, looking inside for Kaufman. Kaufman's got position. They go inside to her. They've got her double team. She tries to go back up, loses the ball. The skins are going to, there's going to be a foul. So Katie Kaufman was double teamed when she got the ball down underneath the bucket, throws the ball away, and then commits the foul. Yeah, that's one of those plays where, you know, if you're Brinkman, you have to realize that just because Kaufman's calling for it doesn't mean we should get it down to her. You know, Kaufman was working hard down there, but you could see the defend a second defender waiting in wait just behind her. And Kaufman may have gotten away with a with a walk yeah, that time I as she so turned too. two. And so a lot of bad happened down there. Katie Kaufman now gonna have to go back and 
Looks like she's going to yeah, be gonna leaving the gym, maybe getting looked at. Not sure if she's injured. I don't know what happened, but Katie Kaufman has left the gym. She's walking down to the locker room, and hopefully we can get a report on her. The trainer's taking her down there. Let's see. What well, I didn't see anything. Did you notice any no limp or nothing like that? No, and that was that was actually the JV coach, that uh, yeah. head coach that walked with her, and now she's coming back, but Katie's still in the hallway, yeah. so not sure what's going on. Hopefully maybe it might just be she had her water bottle with her. Yes. Maybe she just needed a drink, needs a rest. You know, coach knew she wasn't going in with those fouls. Sure. Two fouls with less than a minute left, so. So OG leads 26-21. They go back inside. And a nice job by the Lady Titans. Chloe Glenn did a great job of getting good position. Takes the ball up strong. She's fouled. She'll shoot two at the line. So last trip down, Fort Lormy had the one and one. Ava Turner did a nice job converting those to get this back to a five-point game. But Chloe Glenn comes right down. And Chloe Glenn does what she does. She's so strong down low. Goes right at the basket, drew the contact, and extends this lead now to six. Yeah, does a nice job of knocking that first one in. 56 seconds to go. She'll have another opportunity for another one. Chloe Glenn, the 5'10 senior. And she misses that one, so it's 27-21. Here come the skins. They try to close that six-point lead. Great job again there by Galen Grothaus all over. And looks like the skins are going to take a timeout. There's a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. Watching high school girls basketball, WOSN. Today's premier sponsor is Reese Mearing and Company, CPAs helping businesses navigate their financial future. So uh, it really, it's, it's a six point lead. It's felt bigger than that this half, but credit well, the Lady Redskins. They didn't you know, shy away and they've continued to cut into this lead. Yeah, they've luck uh, close to a backcourt violation sure right was. there. <laughs> sure Almost was. gave that one right back. But yeah, Fort Lormie's done a nice job. Ottawa Glandorf hasn't been able to capitalize on some easy shots at the basket. And, Fort Lormy keeps coming, but another turnover. <laughs> Kaylin Grothaus is just a pest on defense, and she gets a steal there. She's doing a fantastic job. I know I keep saying it, but, boy, she's a huge factor right now. And there's Erford with the ball out top. Carson Erford, the freshman, she kicks the ball over to Katie Brinkman. They'll go back to Erford with 15 seconds to go. This is the freshman as she goes back to the left side. Shot goes up off the iron. Here come the Lady Skins with seven seconds to go. Trying to get a shot here, down 27-21. Shot from the 3-4 line, off the mark. After one half, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans have come to town, and they'll take a 27-21 lead. When we come back, we'll have second half action right here on WOSN. Welcome back for second half action from Fort Lormie High School as the Lady Redskins host the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. And right now the Titans lead 27 to 21. Let's take a look at both teams, Nate, for Fort Lormie. You said it best. They really looked rushed in their offensive sets. Yeah, the defense from Ottawa Glendorf was really put, putting them on their heels. and It just kind of seemed like they were trying to move too quickly. They weren't, you know, playing the sound offense that we're used to seeing. You know, you mentioned, though, prior to the game, this isn't, the offensive firepower that we're used to seeing right, 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 this right, year. Right. Defensively, they're still as strong as ever, but maybe not quite as proficient on the offensive side of things. OG took advantage of that, but Fort Lormie kept it close, just a two-possession game here as we start the third quarter. And OG, I said it before, Kaylin Grothaus is really the, the straw that stirs the drink, and defensively and offensively, she's really having a nice night. Yeah, oh, absolutely. 12 points on the night, two big three-pointers. On the other side, it was Brandowee who right there tried to get something going, had that one taken away from her, ends up out of bounds. But she did all the heavy lifting for Four Lormy. She sure did. She had 12 points as well. Our premier sponsor today is the Reese Mearing Company. CPAs helping businesses navigate their financial future. Reese Mearing and Company, our premier sponsor. So here comes the aforementioned Grote House as she goes inside. And a nice job of getting positioned by Katie Kaufman. She tries to go up left-handed. Ball goes off the side of the rim and will go back to the skins. You know, and that's one of those plays where even though she didn't make it, the play to even get a yes. clean look at it because she was going up against a couple of different hands and she changed direction slightly when she was up there to make sure she went around that block but couldn't get it to go in. Meshers goes back door and they try to get the ball to Victoria Meshers as the ball goes off her fingertips and they'll go back to OG. And there's a lot of plays like that today, Nate. They, they've tried to go back door a few times and it just seems like they're not connecting on those passes. Well, and I think some of that too is the length that they're seeing. Oh, the absolutely. Of the of <laughs> you're trying to clear those hands and them arms and so you go a little bit higher than you're used to. And, you know, when you just 
don't do the things that you're used to as you see another turnover Erfurt, him at yeah. that time. She just kind of pulled her hands back as she, I don't know if she didn't think that was supposed to go to her. She was the only one out there. Yeah. <laughs> Kaylin Kimmon lets the ball go out of bounds and Erfurt tried to get the ball cross court to her. Here come the lady skins. Thought about taking the three from the side and they're going to say she stepped out of bounds or no, they're going to say a foul in the corner there. Foul's going to be on number 32, Caitlin Kimmett. And that is her second. You don't want to get her in foul trouble. And that's her second of the game. And here come the Skins. A little turnaround jumper there by the Skins. Avery Brandaway misses everything. They get the ball back. They're swinging around to the right side. Looking for Brandaway in the post again. They'll set it back up. 6.48 to go. Titans lead 27-21 from Fort Laramie High School. Go back inside to Brandaway, and the ball goes off of her hands. She had great position, and she had Kaitlyn Grothaus cornered down there. She was going to go right over top of her, but the ball just goes out of bounds. Yeah, she tried to just try to catch and shoot in rhythm and didn't gather the ball in at first. So another turnover as both these teams a little sloppy here offensively to begin the third quarter. Here comes Grothaus with the ball on the right side. She spins around, gets the ball inside. Ball goes up from the block, and number 32, Caitlin Kim at the 5'10 sophomore, knocks in the deuce. She gives the OG Titans a 29-21 lead on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. That's a luxury, Nate, when you got 5'10", 6'1", girls on both sides of the post, and you can just dump the ball down. Every team needs a player. When they put the ball in the post, they can score. And there's a big block by Katie Kaufman, and she throws the ball away. You know, that time on the run out, you saw Hazelman looking to the inside. Uh, Kaufman tried to put it on the outside. Ottawa Glendor very fortunate to be able to keep this ball. But you're talking about Caitlin Kimmon, and you know she's not. She's one of those players where you're not going to see a 15, 20 point right, outburst right. for her. You know she may only have two, four, six points, but the length that she brings, she can disrupt things. And when she does get the ball down low, she knows what to do with it. Absolutely. Here comes the skin, or excuse me, here comes the Titans. They try to extend this 29-21 lead. This is Katie Coffin with the ball. She loses the ball. Here comes the Skins down the left side. Shot goes up, and it's good for the Skins. Skylar Albers off the left side. She knocks in the jumper to make it 29-23 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard with 5.28 to go. And now we're seeing Fort Lormie get into that full court pressure quicker than we were in the first half, and it's causing a little bit of issue. Ottawa Glendorf able to dribble out of it, though. And a big time rebound there by Katie Kaufman. She gets the ball out to Grothaus. Grothaus tries to go to the middle and she's going to be fouled. She went to the foul. She dribbled drive to the foul line and she looks like she got maybe hit on the shoulder or something. And she's going to stay in the game. Entering the game now for Fort Lorme is number 12, Carissa Meyer, the 5'8 junior, averaging 3.1 a game. So Lily Hazelman will take the ball out underneath. Yeah, I, I thought they were going to get that. They had Kaylin Grothaus. Looked like she pushed off to get away from her defender, and they got her on the foul. And I think that was one of those instinct pushes, too. Yeah, she was right. starting to cut in, and right at the same time, the little Hazelman thought that she was going to go out. So Grothaus just tried to change direction quickly, and all she did was reach <laughs> out, and, and she had to use that push to I, do I've it. I've done that a lot. I'll be honest <laughs> with you, playing a lot of basketball, I've pushed off a lot like that, hoping to not get caught. <laughs> so here come the skins down 29-23. This is Turner with the ball out top as she looks down low. They'll swing the ball to the left side, go back to Brandaway. Brandaway will hand the ball off. This is Rose out top. Go back to Turner, back to Brandaway. Taking their time, very patient offense right now for the Skins. Three ball on the right side goes up and it's off the iron. Rebound comes down to Chloe Glenn as she gets it out to Grothaus. Roadhouse down the right side. That was quick. That was really quick. It was. And Chloe Glenn did a great job boxing out on that play. As soon as it went up, sealed the defender off, was able to get the easy rebound. And, you know, that's one of the things that Ottawa Glendor does well, though. As soon as you get that rebound, you're seeing players start to run down the floor, and whoever gets the rebound knows they have to look up, see who's down there, and try to find someone open. And that's usually what leads to those easy runouts. And I think the only thing that stopped Ottawa Glendorf that time was Roadhouse just had a hard time getting kind of getting the handles on it when it got up to her. Micah Aldridge enters the game for the ladies Titans. And the 5'9 junior comes into the game. Ottawa Glendorf up 29-23. Shot goes up and it's contested. Rebound comes down to the skins and it's stolen back again. Grothaus gets up, a nice pass to Chloe Glenn and a nice left-handed shot by Chloe Glenn and she's going to go to the line for an and one. 
All started with the hustle of Kaitlyn Kimmett down low. Had it take, didn't get a great shot on the contested one, then took it right back away, went to the floor, found someone open to get it open to. And unselfish play as Grothaus found Chloe Glenn on the inside. And then how about that left hand from Chloe Glenn? <laughs> that was, I'll tell you what, when Grothaus got that ball, she didn't have it but a nanosecond, fires it into Chloe Glenn. Chloe Glenn gets position, goes left-handed, a la Al Cinder, <laughs> and uh, knocks it in. Well, and so much happens in such a short time with them when you start looking at what in real time that that maybe was 35 seconds, yes, maybe. Right, right. And so much happened in that time. <laughs> You're right. So what are we looking at here? It looks like, are they holding a contact maybe? They've stopped play here with 4.07 to go. The trainer is coming down here to the bench. We'll see what we got. And that was, was Katie Kaufman. Well, Caitlin Kimmett came off the floor, and she's sitting down. Chloe Glenn Chloe was going to go to the free throw line. So I think that's what the conversation was, is that Chloe Glenn had to come out of the game as the shooter. Yes. And typically, you know, that's not a great substitution or one that's normally right. even allowed. Um, they're going to go ahead and say that the con missing contact was uh, a medical thing to, to allow the substitution. And Katie Kaufman knocks down the shot, and she gives the OG Titans their largest lead of the night at 32-23. He saw Coach Siegel talking to the official, <laughs> saying, that. hey, listen, you know, Blurred Bridget <laughs> helps us out. I don't know that that's a medical <laughs> emergency. That's a great point, Nate. Here come the skins. This is Brandaway. She leads them in scoring with 12 tonight. She's going to kick it out. They're looking back to Brandaway. Everything today has revolved around Brandaway as she has really helped them out offensively. They'll bring it up top and set it back up. This is number 30, Jaden Rose. Dribble drive to the left side. And, and OG just puts a wall up, and there's a shot, and Brandaway gets the ball to fall, and they needed that in the worst way, and OG leads 32-25. Brandaway's got 14. I'm not even positive that Brandaway knew that she <laughs> shot that ball. She was not ready for that pass, but as soon as it came, she did a great job just getting it under control just enough to get it up for two. And and that's what Fort Loramie needed as they're just continuing to try to keep this one close. And there's a held ball. Here comes Chloe Glenn back in the game for the Titans and Carson Erford. So some firepower gets back on the floor for the Titans. Much needed as they lead 32-25 with 3.16 to go here in the third quarter. Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock from Fort Loramie High School. And they're going to say a held ball and a great job by Alex Rose to get in there and grab that ball. And it'll go back to the Lady Skins. She was able to cut it in there pretty quick and grabbed it at the same time that Brankman did. Going to give a Fort Lormie an extra possession here. So Grothaus is on the ball as she has been all day. And Fort Lormie tries to get back in this one down 32-25 and a nice little pass to Brandaway as she misses it. Gets a rebound, takes it back up, and Chloe Glenn blocks the shot. <laughs> a great job by Glenn. And she gets it out to Grothaus. Here she comes down the right side, kicks it out. Ball comes into the paint and up and in. And a great job by Micah Aldridge as she's going to go to the line and try to complete the three-point play. Micah Aldridge knew that the contact was coming but did a great job of Staying with her head up, going, taking that you know, contact on full force, able to finish for two. And Look, Nate, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. When you have a sophomore in Kalen Grothaus and a freshman in Carson Irvin, and they're your two lead guards, your program's in good hands for the next three years. Absolutely. It really but, is. And the speed of and the speed of Grothaus is just impressive. When she turns oh it on, she just goodness. pulls away. I mean, we're both former track guys. Yes. I would <laughs> love to have her in some sprints and some You're relays. Right. And, and look, <laughs> Grothaus, her knowledge of the game, you can see she sees the floor so well. She is a consummate point guard, always looking to get her other players involved. And she's going to take a breather right now, so I'm kind of disappointed because I like watching her play, and they've got her on the bench. She's going to get a much-needed rest. More substitutions as Rose poked her hand in there trying to get it away from her and she picks up her foul. Turner and Mesher come back in the game for the skin, so they got a good rest. Entering the game also is Summer Hoying. Had a nice first half. Summer Hoying, the 5'11 sophomore, she comes back in the game to give them a little bit of size. And this is Carson Erford, the freshman. They kick it into Chloe Glenn. Guarded heavily, she puts it up and knocks it in. Chloe Glenn shows you how she just muscles that ball in, and she gives the Titans the 36-25 lead with 2.20 to go in the third quarter. Skins go back door, nice pass, and a nice bucket 
by number 21, Victoria Mesher, the six-foot sophomore, a much-needed basket. Closed the gap to 36-27. Mesher's got two on the night. You can see Fort Lormie immediately wanted to come out and pressure. But and there's the answer from Caitlin Kimmett, the 5'10 sophomore, knocks in the three ball, and she extends the lead to 39-27, OG's biggest of the afternoon. We were praising uh, Kim in a little bit earlier for her play on the inside, but right there took it behind the arc. And a big three points for Adela Glandorf. It seems like every time Fort Lormie tries to make a run, OG has an answer, and they have got firepower all over the floor. Ball goes out of bounds. No, it stays in bounds. It'll be a held ball. We'll get a timeout from Carla Siegel and the Lady Skins. So with 1.28 to go here in the third quarter, the OG Titans lead 39-27 right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Loramie High School, where with 1.28 to go in the third quarter, the OG Lady Titans have taken a 39-27 lead. Up 12, Nate, and uh, really, it's just, it's, it's just, right now it's hustle. They're really getting after every loose ball, every rebound, and they're dominating on both sides of the ball. Yeah, Ottawa Randolph has really taken it to them. And Fort Loramie, you know, we mentioned coming in off to 11-0 start to, to begin this season. Um, they've had some close games, so it isn't like they haven't been challenged. Sure, right. They haven't all been blowout. I mean, they know how to fight. So, I mean, yeah, 12-point game, but... I mean, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't put my money on a Carla Siegel team folding this early. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> she's, she's been through the wars many a time. I said earlier, she has 502 wins and only 120 losses and three state titles. So she knows exactly what she's doing over there. Both these coaches are incredible coaches and just great programs. So 126 to go. The OG Titans lead 39-27. Brandoe back into the game has been the offense for Fort Lormie here all she afternoon. Has. They're going to need somebody else to step up, give her a hand. And this is Brandoe with the ball out top. Three ball on the way from the right side, off the mark. That was Skylar Albers as she misses everything. They get the rebound back, and they'll set it back up top. This is Victoria Mesher with the ball up top. They'll go over to Albers, back to Mesher. Everything is contested right now as the Titans are really in their grill, playing good defense. And there's a steal by the Lady Titans, Lily Hazelman. And she goes back to Katie Kaufman. Shot goes up and it's missed, but they did a great job of running the floor. Here come the Lady Skins trying to cut into this lead. Kaufman did a great job running the floor. Hazelman found her just a little bit too strong. As we've seen that here in the third quarter for both offenses, they've really kind of struggled on some of those easy ones. A little sloppy play we're not used to seeing out of either team. And the Fort Lormie uh, student section have got quite a few students over there, but they have not had much to cheer about today. And Brandaway gets the ball inside, and she misses the shot. Rebound comes down to Katie Kaufman, as it has been all day. And she gets the ball out to Carson Erford. 16 seconds to go. They'll go back to Grothaus. Grothaus gets a screen from Erford out top. This is Grothaus. Back inside. Ball goes out of bounds with 4.9 seconds as they tried to get the ball into Katie Kaufman, which is a good plan. <laughs> yeah, David Turner did a nice job on the health defense coming around that baseline and was able to knock that one away. So just under five seconds left to go. We'll see what Ottawa Glendorf can draw up. Roadhouse will take the ball out. Erford gets the ball. They go inside. This is Erford. Ball shot goes up, and it's missed. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. After three quarters from Fort Laramie High School, the Lady Titans lead 39-27. to You're watching High School Girls Basketball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola, all Ultimate Outdoor Division of Alts Seamless Spouting. And Nate, we take a look at Fort Lormie. They defensively they averaged 28.9 a game, and after three quarters, OG's already got 39. Yeah, and OG's done a great job offensively, and they, what they've done is what they typically do. They are turning defense into offense, and when you talk about their defense, what they've been able to do to Fort Lormie tonight has been impressive. Take a look at the quarter scores for Fort Lormie. 13 in the first quarter, 8 in the second quarter, and then a 6-point third quarter. That's just unbelievable. I mean, over, over the years, coming down here and watching Carlos Eagles' teams and the firepower they've had, that, and that's just much credit to OG as it is to anything. Yeah, OG has just done a tremendous job all afternoon, and to, to cut those scores like that, you know, and 
it stayed close. I mean, Fort Loramie's defense has, has done what they can, but it's still 12-point deficit here is going to be tough to overcome if they can't get something going offensively. Here's Grothaus with the ball up top. She's guarded by Jaden Rose. She goes to the right side. They'll kick the ball out. C trying to get the ball to Chloe Glenn inside, but they missed that. Emma Brinkman with the ball. She'll go back to Glenn. Glenn goes to Erford. Ball goes almost out of bounds. Erford double teamed on the wing. And there's a timeout. Troy Yant will take a timeout. We'll take a timeout. It's 7.32 to go in the fourth quarter. Titans lead 39-27. Back here at Fort Loramie High School. The G Titans take the timeout under a lot of pressure there. And uh, Fort Loramie trying to find some life with their defense right now. Yeah, they came out. You can tell a little bit more intensity there. We're going for the traps. They know that they're going to have to manufacture some yes, extra possessions here point. in this fourth quarter, and they're coming out firing. That's a great point. 7.32 to go. Danny Hummer, Nate Garlock from Fort Loramie High School on this beautiful Saturday afternoon of high school girls basketball here on WOSN. Erford gets trapped in the corner, and they're going to say a held ball, so a great job for the Lady Skins, and that was Ava Turner does a great job, and you're right, uh, Nate, if they're going to get back in this game, it's going to be from their defensive effort. Yeah, they come off, they got what they needed. Iowa Glendor still able to knock 30 seconds off of the clock, so, and now we're going to have a bump as Carson Erford. You know, that's one of those ones where, you know, Carson Erford, I think, is a tremendous player. She plays with a lot of poise, but occasionally, as they say, freshmen will be freshmen. Freshmen will be, exactly. And I think that's, that was one of those plays right there. She wants to play good defense. They're known for that, what they do man-to-man. -man. But, you know, where you are on the floor, what's going on, she gets a little bit too aggressive that time. It's sure. going to lead to another foul. And a great matchup I see on the floor. Victoria Mesher being guarded by Chloe Glenn. There's a back door and a nice job and a hoop and a foul. And finally some life from the Lady Skins as Carissa Meyer goes back door, scores and gets fouled. And she'll go to the line to cut the lead to single digits. And this is what they're going to have to do. If they can get some points with the clock, stop by getting to that free throw line. And if you can do it on the backside of a made basket, that's even better. So Carissa Meyer will go to the line. And she misses that shot. Rebound comes down to the Titans. 39-29 with 7.04 to go here in the fourth quarter. Excuse me. This is Lily Hazelman out top. Trying to go inside to Chloe Glenn as she turned to the left side. And ball stolen away. Here come the Lady Skins. This is Ava Turner up the right side. Goes to the middle. Shot goes up. Ball comes up back to Turner. She gets her own rebound. And she's going to be fouled to go to the line for two. And you called it. They, they're going to go the line with the clock stop. Yeah, it's the best way when you're trying to cut into a big deficit like this. You know, we said it was 12 points. Obviously, nothing that's insurmountable. But, you know, if they're going to score 12 points just to get back into this game, they're going to have to have a quarter that's bigger than one they've had yet today. So best way to do that, let's get the clock stopped. Let's score some points and see Turner convert on her first free throw right there. She's got four on the afternoon. She's got another one to go. Now 39-30. As Skylar Albers checks back into the game, and they'll give Carissa Meyer a break and a well-deserved break. She did a great job there in the start of the fourth quarter. So Turner will let the second one fly here. And she makes it to make it 39-31 with 6.49 to go on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. So a couple of bad possessions on back-to-back -back trips down the floor. This one... They're going to say it was out of bounds, no contact, even though both players hit the floor. So, Yeah, Micah Aldridge got knocked to the floor, and she got up, and I, I was concerned about the one leg kind of stood still there, and I thought, well, they don't need another leg injury, that's for sure. Great job of the Titans to push the ball in, and that is great ball movement. As they tried to double team out top, they go to the wing, and then they push the ball to the floor, or to the middle of the floor where there was no defenders. Yeah, and it was just great court vision as they knew exactly where they wanted to go with the ball as soon as they had it in their hands. And they don't have to hesitate when they do that, and that's what leads to some of those um, easy layups as they try to take advantage of numbers. So Chloe Glenn will go to the bench. She'll get a break. Here comes Brandaway on the right side. as She goes up and she's fouled. And a great dribble drive by her. And they'll go to the line. The last three possessions they went to the line as the clock has stopped. And they're yet to come into that 10-point lead. Here they got a chance to go to eight-point lead. Well, that's going to be the 16 foul uh, for Ottawa Glandorf. So now, um, after this one, any more fouls for Fort Loramie, we'll send them to the line. 
So Brandaway misses the first one. She's got 14 on the afternoon to lead all scorers in the game. She'll try to cut into this lead to make it a nine point lead. Let's the second one fly and she knocks it in. 41-32 on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. So here comes the Titans. They're double teamed on the wing. This is Grodhaus with a nice drive and a nice block. <laughs> but Caitlin Kimmett picks up the loose ball and knocks it in to give the, skin, or the Titans the 43-32 lead. Caitlin was where she needed to be on that one, was ready for it. As soon as it hit her hands, didn't think about it, went right back up and led to an easy layup for the Lady Titans. This is Brandaway on the left side of the floor. Looks to move the ball, kicks it back out to Victoria Mesher. They'll go over to Jaden Rose. Shot goes up from the right, off the back iron. Rebound comes down. Skylar Albers puts it back in. Skylar Albers knocks in the deuce. Make it 43-34. Albers has got six on the afternoon. Nice little slip there. Shot goes up by Kimmett. Ball comes back down to the skins, and here they come down the right side of the floor, trying to cut into this nine-point lead. Three ball on the way, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the skins, and a nice uh, cut underneath the defender. Ball goes off, and they're going to get the Titans on the foul. Lily Hazelman trying to poke that one away, just a little bit too much on the arm. That's going to be the third foul for Lily Hazelman as she sat most of the first half because she got two quick ones. And She's going to go have a seat again here in the fourth. And now Skylar Albers will go to the line. Four of the last five possessions, the Skins have shot free throws with no time running off the clock. And they've cut into that lead at nine. This is a chance to cut it into seven. Shot goes up. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Titans. And that's the problem. They've made it to the free throw line, but they haven't been able to convert at a very high rate. This is Grothaus as she goes baseline, kicks it back out. Carson Erford, and the Skins get the loose ball. They'll go to the right side. Back inside. She's guarded by two. Shot goes up, and she thought, and again, the Skins will go to the line. The fifth out of six possessions that the Skins will go to the line. And this is Summer Hoying trying to cut into that lead. Yeah, Summer did a nice job down low as that pass came and got tipped, but still able to gather it. And knew she was going to have lots of contact, but still able to get it up. And she uh, Fort Lorme, yeah, Fort Lorme finally able to get a free throw to go down. Chloe Glenn checks back into the game alongside Carly Brinkman. And Coach Yant from Ottawa Glendale, he's going to take a timeout. I thought they wouldn't give him the timeout because the ball was already in the shooter's hands, but they're going to give him timeout with 4.58 to go. The Titans lead 43-35. Welcome back to Fort Lauderdale High School with 4.58 to go. Real G Lady Titans lead 43-35. I guess, Nate, a good question is, how good's Toledo Christian to beat OG 63-46? Yeah, that was, you know, <laughs> and then I said, then they lost to Liberty Benton right yes, after right. that, and they, they just had a little bit of a hump, and I think, you know, that was a lot of that was. Well, they figured it out. <laughs> yeah, they, they were still trying to, I think, you know, you're just, game five and six, you're still kind of getting in yes, position, yeah. getting yourself back. Sure. And we know they've had health issues, but. I'll tell you what, over the last six games, they really found something, and they've continued that in tonight. But Fort Lormie here in this fourth quarter, they're, they're making a charge. They got this down to eight. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed with both these clubs right now. So much for OG with just both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively, and uh, their size and their length can really give you problems. So at the line right now for, uh, for the Skins is Summer Hoying. 5'11 junior. She misses the second one. And here we are at 43-35. Eight-point lead with 4.54 to go. Four missed free throws here in the quarter. Carson Erford will bring the ball down the floor. She goes dribble drive to the foul line, takes it up, and she's going to be fouled. And that'll put her at the line for two. And, and you know, I think that in the first half, Ottawa Glendorf was a lot more or, – uh, a lot more aggressive going to the rim, and you've seen that they've got kind of back into that mode on that play right there, and I think Coach Yant, when he went to that timeout, probably told him, let's get to the line. They're going to do the same thing. Yeah, they're trying to force that hand. Carson Erford able to knock down that free throw, and um, no hesitation that time. Didn't have to worry about passing around, won't worry about killing clock. Let's just continue doing what we do, and it works out. <laughs> the freshman knocks down two, just as cool as the other side of the pillow to make it a 45-35 lead for the Lady Titans. Here come the Skins. They'll go back to Brandaway. Ava Turner on the left side. 
Swinging back around to Skyler Albers, looking for Brandaway. This is Jaden Rose up top. Shot goes up and it's good, foul line extended. Nice little jumper there by Hoying as she knocks in the deuce to make it 45-37 on the structure outdoor scoreboard. Yeah, great catch and shoot by Summer Hoying. She found herself right there, right around the free throw line. Able to get that one in, so a little bit closer. Fort Lormie's hanging around as we reach the halfway point of this fourth quarter. And there we get a held ball, and the ball's going to go back to Ottawa Glandorf. It's an eight-point lead, and I know OG gets the ball back, but the next held ball goes back to Fort Lormie. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a change of possession, but Fort Lormie did a nice job making sure that the, the, the possession arrow pointed back their direction. And they are really getting up in the in the chest of Ottawa Glendorf, and a nice job. Chloe Glenn cuts to the basket. She misses the shot. Rebound comes down to Erford as she gets it in. Misses that shot. Rebound comes down to Turner. Here come the Lady Skins, trying to cut this lead down to five. It would be the lowest lead since the first half. Nice little running hook, and it's good. Turner knocks in the deuce. It's 45-39 late. We got a six-point lead. That's a six-point for Ava Turner tonight, but her first points from the floor. Everything else has come from the free throw line. As Turner took two or three bounces that time to get it in. And Fort Lormie making a run. And the defensive prowess right now of the Skins is they've got the ball out top and a nice cutback on the back side. Almost stolen away by the Skins. Chloe Glenn gets the ball down low, and they're going to say a travel. Wow, another turnover with 3.12 to go. <laughs> the Lady Skins down 45-39. So they've sped up the Lady Titans, and here come the Skins. And Carly Brinkman was trying to get it to Chloe Glenn down low, but took that extra step before she get the bounce pass off. So well, Now i got the student section standing up over there. Maybe a little bit of bounce in their step, too. So here come the Skins with 3.05 to go. This is Jaden Rose as she loses the ball. The ball goes on the floor. Grothaus corrals it. She comes down the middle of the floor, takes the shot up. It goes off the rim. And I got to believe Coach Yance not happy with that selection as they had the lead. And now we've got a foul. We'll get a foul out top by number 34, Katie Kaufman. And that's going to send Victoria Mesher to the line with nine fouls on the OG side. And you called it earlier, those fouls have, you know, piled up. Yeah, and that's the fourth foul for Katie Kaufman, so she's going to have to be careful. I imagine she's going to take a seat as we're going to have a substitution for... Now it's actually the 10th team foul, so... Ten, yo, you're it's right. It's two free yeah. throws from here on out. That's what uh, was getting <laughs> clarified at the scorer's table. So four Lormies done what they need to do. They just have to knock down free throws, and they do so right there Victoria with Victoria Mesher. Mesher. Yep. She's got three on the afternoon. She cuts the lead to 45-40. And if I'd have told you at the beginning of this quarter they would cut this lead to four, I, I, don't, I don't know that I'd have believed it. And she gets the second one, 45-41 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Here come the Titans with 2.45 to go in leading 45-41. We still have 2.40 left to go, and this is already the <laughs> highest scoring quarter that Fort Lormie has had yes. all night long, and this is what they needed, and they've done it by being able to stop this clock and get to the free throw line. Oh, and a nice little stutter step. What a move. What a move by number 32, Caitlin Kimmett, as she switches hands and goes up the right side and gives the Titans the 47-41 lead. Caitlin Kimmett was held scoreless in the first half. She now has nine points here in the second. And right now, she's really the reason that they're able to hold on to this lead. And Brandaway with a little bit of a out of control shot. The Skins get the rebound. <laughs> and number 41, Summer Hoying gets the rebound and she gets fouled as she goes up for the shot. Summer Hoying also having a good quarter, three points. As we saw her make a trip to the free throw line earlier, has an opportunity to get this to a four point game. First one's on the way and it goes off the front iron. Still 47-41. Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock from Fort Loramie High School and everything you expected out of a game today, we've got here with 2.08 to go in the game. And Summer Hoying hits the second one to make it 47-42, so a five-point game. Hoying's got six on the afternoon. So Carson Erford will bring the ball down. She's challenged by Ava Turner, and they're going to get Turner on the foul. And a little bit of a sarcastic cheer from the OG faithful. <laughs> You know, it'll be interesting to see what Ottawa Vandorf does here as right now they're just trying to hold on. Five-point lead, Fort Lormie has all the momentum. 
know, this is where sometimes I think teams can get themselves into trouble. Is it going to be a one and one situation? So Erfurt's going to go to the free throw line. But you know, I think sometimes teams can get themselves in trouble because they get sure. out of what they do well because they want to milk that clock. They don't want to go fast. They don't want to give extra possessions. So that's when they start pulling things back. They move the ball around, and then the next thing you know, you know, they're giving the yeah. ball away. You know, so Ottawa Glendorf, they can score quickly. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to have that strategy here down the stretch. Carson Erford, the freshman. We say freshman only in, <laughs> in it's because it says ninth grade beside her, but she plays so much more than a freshman right now. And she knocks in the free throw to give OG the 48-42 lead. Second one on the way. Just as cool as she can be. Now four for four from the line here in the fourth quarter. And she's got eight on the afternoon. OG leads 49-42. They'll go back inside. Double team and a nice job of splitting the double team. And Brandaway gets the rebound and knocks in the little jumper to make it 49-44. Brandaway's got 17 on the night. There's a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Girls Basketball, WOS 10. One forty-six to go here in the fourth quarter. OG leads 49-44. Danny Herbert and Nate Garlock from Fort Laramie High School for today's high school girls action between two state powers, the Fort Laramie Redskins and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. And, Nate, this has been everything we've asked for. And uh, here we come down to the wire. The OG Titans lead by five. Yeah, I think if you would have told us at the start of the game that we'd have a game this close, we'd been like, absolutely, that's what we expect. <laughs> we didn't think it was going to happen. Though. About 10 minutes ago, we would not have thought we'd be where we are right now. Fort Lormie's done an excellent job to give themselves an opportunity. It's going to be up to OG to close this one out. So here comes Roadhouse, the sophomore guard. She's being guarded out top by Jaden Rose. She's going to get a screen on the left. She goes baseline on the left side. Shot goes up. Off the iron. Rebound comes down to Victoria Mesher. And here come the Lady Skins. This is Hoying with the ball. Roadhouse tips it away. Mesher grabs the loose ball, tries to get down across the timeline. They go inside. This is Hoying, or this is Brandaway with the shot up top. She misses. Rebound comes down, and they're going to get a travel call. They're going to get a travel call on number 32, Caitlin Kimmett, as she grabbed the rebound. Lots of contact on the inside. Right. And, and yeah, I think you could have called contact on either team that time as Kimmett ends up with possession. And yeah, I think if it had been the other way around, Fort Lorme would have got called for the travel as well. Yeah. Trying to get the ball. This is, this is Brandaway inside. Shot goes up. Kimmett blocks it, and she gets the rebound. And a great job by Caitlin Kimmett. And there's a foul out top on number 30, Jaden Rose, and that's going to send Kimmett to the foul line. That time, Kimmett was not going to let that one get lost. She was not going to hit the floor. Great job taking a strong rebound. Now she has a chance to take the trip to the other side of the floor and try to extend this lead. Kaylin Kimmett will go to the foul line. She's got nine on the night, in the afternoon, excuse me. That's the first one fly. And it goes off the iron. Rebound comes down to Brandaway. She kicks it back out to Victoria Mesher. They go to the middle, back inside. Oh, and they throw the ball away, trying to find Brandaway out top. And Erford gets the loose ball. Here comes Grothaus up the middle of the floor. 45 seconds to go. She's going to be fouled by Turner out top. Yeah, Eva Turner just had to reach out and try to get a, a piece of her as Grothaus was starting to take that separation and use that speed. And with under a minute left to go, you wonder if Fort Lormie's just running out of time. That's exactly what I was thinking. So Broodhouse will go to the line for the OG Titans. She's got nine on the night. She's trying to extend this five-point lead with 45 seconds to go. First one on the way up, and it goes off the back iron. Rebound comes down to the skins. Victoria Mesher, she brings the ball down the middle of the floor. They'll go to the left side. Little dribble drive. Shot goes up. Ball comes down and it is rebounded by, well, they get a held ball, it looks like to me. They're going to say a held ball and then go back to the skins. So they're letting them play as far as contact goes because sure. they, are, they are banging bodies down low. They're trying to jockey for position. And for Lormy, fortunate that the possession arrow is still in their favor. Three ball on the way from the right side. Goes off the iron. Rebound comes down and another held ball. Yeah, they're going to call another held ball. So you're right. They are really banging bodies in there. Ball goes back to OG. 
24 seconds ago. OG leads 49-44. You see the urgency in the ladies' skins as they're trying to get every loose ball, and we're going to get a timeout on the floor. Coach Troy Yant wants to talk things over with his troop. With 24 seconds ago, the Titans lead 49-44. You're watching high school girls basketball on WOSN. We're back here at Fort Laramie High School. The Lady Titans lead 49-44. Coach Troy Yant takes the timeout with 24 seconds to go. Nate, what do you think he told his girls? Well, I think it was just about taking care of the ball. We can't have any more turnovers. You know, they know they're going to have some press here, but not to get going too fast, no bad passes. And then on the other side, no for more fouling. So the Titans will take it out underneath Fort Laramie's basket. This is Erford with the ball, and she's going to be fouled immediately by number 30, Jaden Rose. And Erford will go to the line with 22 seconds to go. Yeah, and I'm sure part of what Coach Ant was talking to him about was who do we want this inbound to go to? Who Because they know the foul's coming. And, you know, obviously Carson Erford, excellent free throw shooter, four for four already in the fourth quarter. But, you know, we already talked about her presence on the floor, but how about Ottawa Glandorf wanting their go-to free throw shooter to help close out a game via freshman. Well, she just knocks down that one, and she just looks so calm and composed there. And she gets another one here. Shot on the way up, and it's nothing but net. Makes it 51-44. Erford's got 10 on the night. 22 seconds to go. OG leads 51-44. Here come the skins. Bring the ball down the floor, trying to get a shot off. Dribble drive to the left side, shot goes up, and it's good. And a nice job by Victoria Mesher of taking the ball up. 14 seconds to go. We'll keep it right here. OG up 51-46. You know, we've seen a lot of players over the years, Nate, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Carson Erford is special as far as, you know, a, a freshman guard in a big game like this against a program like Fort Loramie. Yes, I mean, you can tell. I mean, just the presence she has out there, this, the spot's not been too big for her at all. And I, I've been fortunate to see Ottawa Glendorf. I think believe this might be my fourth or fifth time this season You're already. You're the voice of the Titans. Yeah, I've, I've seen them quite a bit. Um, and she's never looked like it's been too much for her, even on games that she struggles. She, she has had games where, you know, you can see some of that inexperience, especially when it comes to fouls. She gets a little too aggressive. Um, you know, she's been in foul trouble a couple of times, but she always finds ways to get back in the game. She never lets it get it down. You don't see bad body language. You don't see frustration. And that's just something that you typically don't see out of freshmen. I mean, she just, you know, she plays bigger than what you would think a freshman would play. And, you know, with a last lane like Erford, there, there's, there, you know, <laughs> you're, coming, you're coming behind some pretty good players, right. and, you know, she's well on her way to making her own mark. Well, I said it earlier, her and Kaylin Grothaus might be the, the, the best young guards in the area combination because they both are just so poised and so under control, and that, that program's in good hands for the next three or four years. So 14 seconds to go. OG will take it out underneath Fort Laramie's basket. They'll get it to Erford. Double team in the back one. There's a steal. Shot goes up underneath, and it's good. That cuts the lead to 51-48. Mesher gets the bucket. Erford again, double team, and she's going to be fouled. So <laughs> it ain't over yet, partner, with five seconds to go in a three-point lead. And I'll tell you what, three-point lead, five missed free throws yep. in the quarter by Fort Laramie. You know, those loom even larger now as they somehow managed to make this a one possession game, even with just five seconds left to go. The fact that it's only a three point game is just amazing. Let's see Erford as she goes to the line now. She's been so cool knocking in these free throws and she's got a chance to seal the deal here with 5.6 seconds to go. OG up 51-48. I'm not real sure what they're waiting on here. I think just because of the quick substitutions, I think maybe the scores table didn't quite catch everybody. Oh, so they were getting the foul oh, right on who they okay, called okay, it on because okay. who they, uh, it sounds like who they initially called score saver thought they had fouled out. So here's Erford with the first one. She knocks that one down. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if any shots she's took has touched rim at all. It doesn't look like there's any panic, and now with five seconds left, back out to a two-possession game. Five, so she goes, she's going to go to the line for another shot. OG up 52-48. Now, there's no four-point play here, no five-point play. So if you're Fort Laramie, you, you've got to come down and, and score immediately and get a timeout. I mean, it's look, it's five seconds. I know. <laughs> well, it's one of those things where it's, you know, you almost need – you know, it's like, hey, listen, whatever you do, get into the body yes, of somebody. Yeah, yeah. You're, and you're hoping that maybe Ottawa Glendorf gets a little too aggressive, maybe makes this mistake. But you know what? 
none of that comes into play if Erford knocks down the right, straight throw. Right, right. It's, it's all academic if she knocks it down. So if she does, that'll make it a 53-48 lead here. And uh, the OG Titans will walk out of here with a huge road win, and I say huge, uh, regardless of the fact that OG is a bigger program. Don't get me wrong. This is a huge win for the Titans. Yeah, it is. And, you know, especially coming down here yes. for Lormy, undefeated. You know, they they they've pretty much been able to handle everything that's come their way. Um, you know, you're going to get to come and see uh, some pretty good basketball next week. Both of these teams, they play great non-conference yeah. schedules. They put themselves up against the best, and Ottawa Glendorf has been tested because of that, and they were ready today. So a little bit of confusion with the clock there as they handed the ball to Erford, and the buzzer went off, and they straightened that out. I don't know, and it happened again. We don't know what's happening there. <laughs> so the clock operator said, I'm not pushing any buttons, so uh, let's see if it happens again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Some nervous people right now. <laughs> Erford gets the second one, and she knocks it in to make it 53-48 with five seconds to go. Coach Troy Ant tells his girls, step away, get your hands up, don't touch anybody, stay away from contact. The skins will bring the ball down. They'll let it come to half court. Shot goes up from the left side, off the mark, and the Lady Titans come into Fort Lormy and get a 53-48 win. Your summary, Nate Garlock. Yeah, I think it all starts with the defense from Ottawa Glandor. If we saw Fort Lormy finally start to figure some things out in that fourth quarter, but for the first three, the defense just completely smothered Fort Lormy and had them befuddled. They had no idea what to do. They couldn't break it, really got them out of their rhythm, and that's what allowed OG to open up that lead. So even when Fort Lormy finally got things going, you know, eventually they just ran out of time, and Ottawa Glandorf with a huge victory here to extend that win streak to seven. So a great win for the OG Titans. The final score from Fort Lormy High School, the OG Lady Titans win 53-48. For Nate Garlock, I'm Danny Holbrook, and our entire WSN crew saying God bless, and we'll see you next time.